بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters we as human beings we have all kinds of needs we need food we need water we need shelter and we need we need sleep all of these things are needs that we strive and we work hard to meet them so that so that we can survive and we can enjoy our life as long as we are on this planet. But our needs are not limited to just eating and drinking and sleeping. We have many other needs. And one of these needs is social interaction, a sense of belonging. Human beings need to interact, need to belong to a community, need to communicate and engage and exchange. That is a natural need that we have. When our social needs are not met, then there will be consequence to our psychological and intellectual and social capacity and also well-being. And social interaction is so important that we find in Islam everything that we do we are encouraged to do it collectively. The most important act of devotion that we have in Islam is prayer, the Salah. And we can pray alone or we can pray in congregation. Islam encourages us to pray in congregation. In fact, the reward that we get when we pray in congregation is 27 times greater than when we pray individually. When we pray in congregation, we get the benefit of the spirituality of praying, but also we nurture ourselves socially. We meet with our brothers and sisters. We talk with, with them. We discuss issues with them. That face-to-face -face meeting and that conversation is essential for our well-being and our mental health. Every devotion in Islam we see to a great extent has always a social component. Hajj has a very important social component. It is a devotion that's done collectively with people coming from all over the world. Similarly, the zakat, which is a, a social obligation that we have towards others, is also an exercise in reaching out and sharing what we have. So as we can see them, my dear brothers and sisters, every act of devotion that we do, even though it is individual in nature, when we pray, when we fast, when we do Hajj, but we are encouraged to do, to do it collectively and by doing it collectively, we get not only the social, the spiritual benefit, 
but also we get the social benefit. So healthy social interaction is essential and critical. Even when it comes to eating, Prophet says in a hadith, Ulu jami'an wa la Eat together and do not separate or dis disperse. And the hadith says, فَإِنَّ طَعَامَ الْوَاحِدِ يَكْفِ الْإِثْنَيْنِ The food that was meant for one person can be enough for two. What was meant for two would be enough for three. What was meant for three will be enough for four. For four. And that barakah, the blessing of Allah, is always is with, with a group, with a jama'ah. So accordingly, Islam, by definition, is a faith that encourages us and that provides for us opportunities to have a healthy social life. Isolation, my dear brothers and sisters, has dire consequences. And accordingly, it's important that we do everything to keep ourselves socially nurtured and socially connected. There is something called the Rosetta effect. And this is a name that came from a town in Pennsylvania and the United States where a physician noticed that the people in this town had a lower heart problems. And he wanted to find the reason. And he did so much research and study and the type of food they eat and the type of, of, of exercise they engage, and so on and so forth. But he couldn't find any explanation. What they were doing was not any different. But he found that they had a very healthy social life. They had a very well-connected, and a strongly bonded community. And the conclusion of this researcher was that these people had a healthy, had, had, had a lower heart rate and were healthier because of the healthy social life they had. So accordingly, my dear brothers and sisters, following the guidance of Islam, it's important that we be constantly socially engaged by joining the congregation of prayers, by volunteering our times, by sharing what we have. In prison system, if they want to punish a person, they would put them in solitary confinement because it's not human nature to live in, 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 in isolation. And today, many studies show that when people become isolated, then they become or they come, at, they, they face greater risk when it comes to their overall well-being. My dear brothers and sisters, the COVID crisis that we have today, we face greater risk of being in isolation. Opportunities to socially interact have been greatly minimized. In our community, our mosques were always full. You can go for Fajr prayer, you can go for Isha prayer, you can go at any prayer. You have a chance to talk to people, to 
to, to see people, to, to, to hug them, to shake. These are very, very important for our well-being. The photoramas, the sports activities, all of these, my dear brothers and sisters, are essential for our health and our well-being. With COVID-19 restrictions, unfortunately, these avenues are not available for us. And accordingly, it's important that we do everything possible to keep ourselves engaged until this crisis ends. If we let this crisis cut us from our social circles, that might be something that we might not be able to break even after the end of, of the COVID crisis. So during this crisis, perhaps, maybe we should constantly engage in communication through the avenues available, whether it is the Zoom or the phone, whatever it is, it's important to keep engaged and to keep active in our relationship. So my dear brothers and sisters, Islam, as it is said, Deenul Jama'a is the faith of Jama'a, the faith of community, the, the faith of collectiveness, the faith of social life and social engagement. And what Islam has taught us in terms of our social life has been confirmed by scientific research and study. One of them is what I already mentioned, what's known as the Rosetta effect. Further, my dear brothers and sisters, as I mentioned last time, there are many who might be in a situation of isolation and loneliness, particularly elders within our community. Certainly we cannot visit them, we cannot reach out to them. And since they are the most vulnerable segment of the community, we should find ways to communicate with them by phoning them, by engaging them in Zoom interaction. That way, we help them to be socially nurtured. As Muslims, we strive to be spiritually nurtured, socially nurtured, intellectually, physically, in every way. And when we have that balance in our life, this life becomes more meaningful and we would have a more productive and a more enjoyable, enjoyable life. Thank you very much for listening to me. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.